guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Ashley and today I am talking about how to successfully trans, um, to transfer your children out of public school into homeschool. So many of you guys have requested this video from me and so I had to really sit down and think back to when I was transitioning, that was the word I was looking for, transitioning my older two kids from public school into homeschool. I had to really sit down and prayerfully think about things I did or things I wish I would have done, but I just didn't know at that time to make that transition easier. So I do have notes down below. As you guys know, I usually have some notes because I really want to make sure that the information I'm giving you is good quality information and not just me like mumbling around. Um, and also know ahead of time that these are not in order. These are just going to be like 10 tips that I have exactly 10 for transitioning your kids from a private school, a charter school, a public school, basically a traditional school setting in whatever capacity your kids are in to a homeschool setting, meaning at home. Now, some of these are going to be more um, relatable to kids who are a little bit older. For example, if you're pulling your child out of kindergarten, you may not experience all of these things. Um, and then for kids who have been in public school much longer, you might experience these things at a greater intensity. So keep that in mind as a frame of reference, but I'm just going to go ahead and share with you the 10 tips I've got for transitioning your kids from public school to homeschool. Okay, so the first tip I've got for you guys is a huge one, and it's a mistake I made, but I'm gonna tell you. The first tip, do not try to replicate public school at home. Even if your kids enjoyed public school and you took them out for different reasons, just don't try to make it the same. Homeschool should not look like public school. You're the mom, they're in their safe place at home, you've only got your kids, you don't have 30 kids in a classroom. So a lot of the techniques and a lot of the procedures that are done in public school are really unnecessary and will only cause frustration in your homeschool. So don't try to set up your homeschool to replicate public school, make it your own, make it work for you and your kids. Tip number two, if you're pulling your kids out of public school and they maybe have had some negative experiences, I would encourage you, even if they haven't had negative experiences, I would encourage you to sit down with your kids and really have a heart to heart. Listen to them, discuss some of the reasons why you have decided that you think homeschooling will be a better option for them. Discuss how the problems they were encountering in public school may not occur at home. Reassure them, you know, really just have a heart to heart with your kids about why you're making the decision you're making um, and what you think is going to be best for them. And um, I just think getting on that same page before you even start diving into curriculum is really, really important. And listening to your kid's heart is really, really important. So that way, if there's any situations they've been in or any kind of um, you know, kids sometimes don't talk about everything that happened, but maybe um, there'll be uh, triggers like testing anxiety and you go to give a test in your homeschool and you've got no idea that your kids get really anxious about testing um, and then you do that and then they're lashing out at you. Some of that could probably have been prevented if you had that type of conversation. So I just encourage you, obviously age appropriately, to have a heart to heart with your kids. Tip number three, for transitioning from public school to homeschooling is don't jump into too much too soon. When you're gonna start homeschool and you've never done it before, you get all these grand ideas, and I had them, and I still do, of how amazing you're gonna, um, your school is gonna be, how you're gonna get to go so much deeper into certain topics, how your kids are gonna learn X, Y, and Z that they wouldn't necessarily have been able to learn. You know, you really start dreaming and going big. I encourage you to do the opposite. I encourage you to start with the bare minimum and then build up from there as your children are ready and as you're ready as the teacher. It's very difficult to take on a ton right away and adjust to being with your kids 
all the all of the time um, figuring out your schedule figuring out so many other things so stick with the basics reading writing and math when you first start homeschooling and then build off of that when you're ready tip number four is don't go into homeschooling alone and when I say that I don't mean actually like have a physical friend if you can have someone in your real life who homeschools then you are lucky um, because I really only had one friend um, before I joined a homeschooling group which I've done videos on that it wasn't easy for me to find a group um, but I had one friend in person who encouraged me um, really that's why I was online um, so do it online find moms like me find there's tons of homeschooling moms on YouTube um, I there's some of them that I follow I, I don't follow every single one of them so I'm sure there's some I don't even know about but there are a lot of homeschooling moms on here look in your area just try to not do it alone and if nothing else most importantly if you're married make sure your spouse is in your corner and understands that their role in homeschooling um, unless they're doing teaching with you is going to be supporting you um, number five go in to your homeschool expecting resistance don't go in thinking oh my you know every day is going to be glorious expect your kids to not want to do school expect your kids to complain about their curriculum expect your kids to um, maybe even refuse to do some of their schoolwork expect whining expect all of that now will that all happen for you maybe not but if it does at least you're not surprised and at least you won't be blaming yourself thinking oh my gosh am i doing something wrong mm -mm. that was me i thought i was doing something wrong it really is just a transitional period figuring out how you're gonna work together how's this gonna work out can we do school in the presence of Legos even being an eye shot can we do school when my kid is a little bit hungry um, there's just so many things that are gonna be specific to you and your homeschool that you need to figure out so if you go in expecting a little pushback you're gonna be not as surprised when that happens and probably able to deal with it a little bit better um tip number six is to write down on a physical piece of paper why you are homeschooling your child or children i did it i still have that paper from 2014 the summer from 2014 to 2015 and I've never even shared it on YouTube. Let me know if you guys want to see. I'll read it right off of there. It's it's very um, to the point. But I have gone back to that paper several times when I have been discouraged and I've been tired and I've been thinking about, you know, oh, I could have some alone time. All I want is some alone time. But I've gone back to that paper and it keeps me anchored in why I made this choice because none of those reasons have changed. So I encourage you to do the same thing. Um, tip number seven is a very um, basic one is to understand the homeschooling laws in your state. Make sure that you follow your state specifically with their requirements for homeschooling, especially if you're withdrawing a child from public school. There are specific papers um, that are going to need to be filled out and filed specific to the state or country that you live in. Um, but withdrawing a child is different than just never sending a child so make sure you understand your state laws the hslda is the number one source for laws on homeschooling so i will leave that link down below if you need to head there but that is definitely a very important part to making sure you've got all of your ducks in a row legally as you transition to homeschool um, and that is specific to the United States. I'm not familiar with homeschooling in other parts of the country, but that website is for the United States. Um, number eight, make sure you've got time in your homeschool plans to do things you enjoy doing with your kids. If you're an active mom and you enjoy exercise, go on a bike ride and you run with your kids. If your kids love being outdoors and going hiking, 
take your kids hiking, especially when you're first starting out. I think it's even more important. Now it's always important, but it's more important to set a tone. So I focused a lot on that. We went on a lot of fun field trips. We went out and saw nature all the time. We, we did many, many things like that. At least I tried to do once every two weeks. I wasn't doing it like every day, but I wanted my kids to, um, enjoy the freedom that came with homeschooling. And so I made sure that that was a priority. So make sure you're doing things that you enjoy with your kids. Uh, number nine is wrestle with the fact that you're going to be different ahead of time. People are going to have comments. Friends are going to think you're weird. Um, friends are not going to understand. Friends are going to judge you. Um, friends are going to be defensive. Uh, you know, just expect the the oh you homeschool and just kind of know that that's par for the course it's not always personal to you um but just expect people to wonder and also learn the difference between someone genuinely asking questions about homeschool and wanting to know more about it from an actual place of interest and also as kind of like with an attitude kind of behind it and give less time to those people and really just come up with an answer that you're going to say i know lots i know a friend in my homeschool group when she gets engaged in those kinds of conversations and she feels like it's not really from a genuine place she'll just say well this is what's working for our family right now and that kind of wraps it up so don't feel like you have to explain yourself to everybody, but just expect questions and, you know, concerns even maybe for doing something different. Not everybody makes this choice. And um, even though it is becoming more popular, it's still not the most popular option for schooling. So know that people are going to ask you questions. And my last tip. Tip number 10 for transitioning your kids from a public school setting to a homeschool setting is be patient the rewards come but they don't come when you want them to come they come when you're least expecting it you might be frustrated and second guessing yourself so much because your child is not reading yet or they're not reading well yet don't go and stress yourself out and change your reading curriculum a hundred times and worry that they'd be better off in public school give it time give it patience and you will get the reward that you are after now can i say how quickly no i can't but i just have seen it happen time and time again in my own homeschool where things that i have been specifically concerned with or deep down worries that i haven't even really told anybody they resolve themselves and i see my kids growing thriving learning so much um, understanding their faith more deeply. I could keep going on and on and on, but the rewards are huge. And not only for the kids, but you as a mom or whoever is gonna be doing the homeschooling, um, the rewards are great. The time that you get to spend with your kids you're never gonna wish that you didn't spend that much time with your kids ever, even on the hard days. Um, when I look back, I know I'm gonna be so thankful that God provided for me to be able to do this. Um, and so just know that the rewards of homeschooling are great. Sometimes you have to be patient and wait on them. And maybe you will have to wait on them for some of our kids until they're 18 and out of our house and go off to college. And then two years down the road, they call us and say, mom, thank you so much. You know, some of us are going to be waiting that long, but be diligent, stick with it, especially if you feel that tug in your heart to do it, you won't regret making the choice. And that is going to be it for this video. You guys, please let me know. If you have any other tips for transitioning your kids from public school to homeschool down in the comments below. So that way, if anyone stumbles upon this video who is considering homeschool, they can read all of our tips on transitioning. And if you are someone who is thinking about homeschooling, I would love to hear from you as well if any of these tips resonated with you. And I will see you guys soon in my next video. Bye guys.